Welcome, everybody. Welcome aboard. Glad to see you tonight. Well, I wish I could see you. I'm glad you guys are here. <laughs> I wish we could have like your screens. That would be if there was you we know, could, Facebook. We could do a Zoom. A, yeah, I was live. Say we could do a full Zoom. We could. We could do a Zoom and record it. And we would have to mute everybody, though. We would. People have a hard time pushing that mute button. Oh, my gosh. And when they don't mute, though, it, do, it feels like, I don't know, do y'all ever do Zoom meetings? Y'all ever have the Zoom meetings with a bunch of people, and then, you know, you hear all the chatter and the dogs barking and everything else yes. in the background? But then when they mute, then it feels like they're not really there. So I don't really like the, I, I don't really like the mute so much. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> hey, let me know tonight. I did some different settings on the live stream. So let me know. Uh, if it's less glitchy, if it seems better, uh, we're always trying to make things work a little better. So let me know if that's if it seems to be working. We uh, found some new little, or I found some new little tips and tricks and tweaks. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, you haven't even shared those with me yet. So uh, well, we we <laughs> you came in. We weren't talking about that at all. <laughs> we were. We we we've been having some heavy discussions, man. We and, and it's good. It's you know. Uh, one thing I've always, well, when he was younger, I didn't so much enjoy it. <laughs> but one thing I've always loved about Ryan is uh, he, he'll he talk to you and he'll, sometimes he'll challenge the way you think. And uh, and that's good. That, you didn't like that when I was younger? I didn't like that when you were younger, though. No, that wasn't. <laughs> just listen. <laughs> yeah, just do what I'm telling you, you know. <laughs> Even though in the back of your head, you're thinking, dang it, kid's probably right. But, you know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Ryan's always kind of been that way. So, uh, but Ryan, I love you, man, and you're you're incredible. And I, I'm I'm glad that you get to sit, or that you get that I get to sit. And I've allowed with you. you. Yeah, <laughs> I've allowed you. Uh, I'm glad that you're here, man, because you bring so you bring you always bring some great insight and feelings and uh, thoughts. And so, well, how's everybody doing, man? Let us know if you're if you're listening tonight. Let us know where you're listening from. I always love it when we have some other people from out of state that get to join in. Uh, let us know if you've already had supper. I would like to know what you've had for supper because I'm going to be eating after this. Yeah, I got an email saying something about Papa John, so I'm assuming oh, Aaron ordered us. Maybe pizza. so. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'd <laughs> like to know because you know, don't you hate having to figure out what you want to eat? Oh, I don't do that. I make Aaron do that. Yeah. So, so maybe if you had some suggestions of what we should eat afterwards, or at least what I, it sounds like you've already got pizza going. Yeah. So uh, that would be that'd be really super cool. I know Aaron uh, doesn't like it. I don't, she, that's her least favorite feeling in the world. Of having to pick. Yeah, of having yeah. to figure out what to eat yeah. in grocery no, Nobody shopping. likes that. Nobody wants to have to figure that out. No, that's, I don't. that's why I put I put her in charge of that. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. That's fun. Yeah. Well, good evening, everyone. So like I said, let us know where, where you're at, what you're what you're eating for dinner. And um and we've got we've got an interesting topic tonight. Um we're just talking about God, of course, and uh, but uh, the thing, the, the scripture that's been in my heart is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Uh, should we go ahead and jump in here, or do we need to chatter about anything else? Uh, we, what I mean, kind of comments? Let's see what we got. What, nothing pizza? Really. Oh, Aaron's Subway. pizza on the couch. Spaghetti. Subway, that kind of sounds good. Spaghetti sounds good. I bet Adelina cooks some good spaghetti. Adelina, good to see you there. Anthony, thanks for joining. Tim, thanks for showing up tonight. Do you want to do? You want to talk about like announcements now? Or oh do yeah, let's do that. Let beginning? me take that off the screen. Yeah, let's talk about announcements. So uh, Ryan's gonna have a baby. If you haven't heard. Oh yeah. Uh, well, yes. I don't know if that's news. <laughs> that may not be news. But I'm having uh, a baby. Yeah, he's I having am. a baby. It's Look, he's, he's looking really good though. He's nice and trim. Still got his physique and everything. But yeah, mm -hmm. November sixth, right? No. Nope. Third. November third. Third. Possibly yeah. or late October. Oh wow. Maybe it moved up, huh? Yeah, I mean, well, this isn't even an announcement no, no you wanted to talk changed. about. No, is this it? is not. Yeah. No, I'm not church stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's make some church announcements. So this Sunday, what's happening Sunday, Ryan? This Sunday yep. is the Upbeat Kids. Upbeat Kids. Yeah. Yep, yeah, back we're to doing, school. We're doing a giveaway. Yeah. We're giving away cups that are somewhat similar to somewhat, this. Yep. It's not this. Like, yeah, like the, solid, the metal. Yeah. Like it'll be insulated, insulated. metal there mug. We go. Yeah. yeah, and then I believe a lunchbox. some kind. I've only seen a picture, but it looks it's really. A it's yeah, it's a lunchbox. Yeah, I've only seen a picture of it. It's some kind of insulated food carrying device. So, uh, what no. did you have a lunchbox in school? I don't remember if you had one. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have like a cool 
Uh, I had my favorite lunchbox. This is back in the metal lunchbox. Was a Roadrunner lunchbox. Yeah, it was. It was sweet. It was a cool deal. I don't. Yeah. I don't know what my lunchbox. Did any of y'all have a cool lunchbox when you were in school? Mine was probably just gray or something. Oh, just a gray bag. Yeah. Ryan didn't want to stand out. No, nope. nothing. Not gonna stand out the gray. Uh, <laughs> but so we're giving those away. Uh, to what are the ages? Is it just school and college? I think it's school or? and college. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what the I don't know if the college kids need a box for lunch, but they might. I don't know. Yeah. And we thought of something. We were trying to find something because some kids aren't really going to school. School. They're yeah. just having school at home. And so we, you know, and then the school list has changed so much. So instead of glue sticks and all this stuff, mm -hmm. uh, we decided to do the lunch things because a lot of kids, even if you're doing home or school at home. Uh, they'd like to have a cool water bottle and, you know, something to put their lunch in and make it feel kind of like school. Yeah. So uh, so that's what we're doing. So come out Sunday. We're giving those away at uh, 10 a.m. at the Uprising. It's going to be pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, I've had some people call, say they're coming. So Very cool. let's hope we have enough. If we don't, we'll get more. Don't worry. We'll make sure you we, you don't leave. You you'll might, get a, you'll you, get a voucher. A voucher, yeah. Come back. We'll you'll have to one. come back next week. I'm sorry. <laughs> We haven't really bought any. We're just yeah. trying to get everybody. To come. Oh, we ran out. You have to come back. Sorry, next time. they're already gone. It's like no one's here. Ten people. Yeah, well, it's, we only had two. <laughs> no, we got we got a bunch coming, and hopefully we'll have enough. So that's going to be really exciting. Uh, September 11th. Should we talk about that? Yes. September 11th. September 11th is is the Arise Gathering in Cleburne, Texas, and God put that in my heart a few weeks ago. Uh, to just gather a bunch of churches together. And so it's just a citywide uh, multi-church event. And we're just really expecting God to do some supernatural things uh, at that event. So that is September the 11th at Cleburne Family Fellowship down in Cleburne. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's, I think right now there's eight, eight different churches and ministries. No, I think it's nine. Anyway, quite a few are going to be there already. And so uh, make sure you put that on your calendar, save that date. Uh, it does start at 6.30. Come early to get a good seat. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I'm just expecting God to move and do some really, really big things. So so be there to that. It, what else? What, is there any other announcements we need to make? No, that's what I'm trying to see. Okay. I think that's what that is, gets it pretty much. What is the... Uh, never mind. No, you yeah, We're good, yeah. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, so those two things. Put those on your calendar this Sunday and September the 11th. And of course, every Sunday we have church at the up. Come and be a part of that. Well, let's get back in here. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Get your Bible. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. If you have a Bible on your phone, wherever you got it, you got Grandma's big Bible on the coffee table, get the family together around, uh, pull out your Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We find these words. I found, I, I, I've discovered the Christian Standard Bible. Have you ever read that? Um, it's on Bible Gateway. It's Christian pretty, Standard. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a pretty cool version. So I'm going to read this. There's too many. I, there is. Everybody's got a version. Yeah. yeah. You should have the, the RJV, the Ron Jordan version. I don't think anybody wants that. <laughs> I don't think so. All right. So 2 Corinthians <laughs> chapter 4. I want the emoji Bible. The that's emoji. I, they, did they have that? I've heard something about that. I don't know. I've always heard about it, but yeah. I've never seen it. Oh, yeah. I, I have trouble sometimes with emojis because I can't see real well. <laughs> so I don't know if he's smiling You're too old to even or, know what yeah. the emojis are. I know what emojis are. Not I, all of them. I know, well, not all of them. But, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough to be able to speak <laughs> speak emoji. I'm trying to read this. You're interrupting. Second yeah. Corinthians chapter four, verse seven. Seven. Yes, from the Christian Standard Bible. It says, "Now we have this treasure in clay jars, so that this extraordinary power may be from God and not from us." Yeah, I love that verse. It's just been in my heart, and so uh, these last few days. So here's the the. Uh, the CEV, now I can't remember what CEV stands for, but it's another different translation. And this one says... I think says, that's the one I was thinking of. I like that one. You like this one? This one's good too, yeah. So this says, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, We are like clay jars in which this treasure is stored. The real power comes from God and not from us. I think that is just so cool. A little so reminder. I was, I was thinking, Ryan, I don't know if you ever watched it. I don't know if anybody's ever watched this show. I, I, sometimes I find the weird show. Probably uh, not. This show is called The Curse of Oak Island. Nope, never heard of it. Never heard of it? Not even heard of it. I bet somebody that's listening. Has, if you've heard of that show, I want please you to, lie yeah, and say you haven't. Let me know. <laughs> let me know if you've ever watched The Curse of Oak Island. Or maybe you haven't watched the show. You didn't know it was even out there. 
but you have heard of Oak Island. So Oak Island is this little tiny island. Oh, yeah. No one's watched this. Oh, yeah. They have watched it. This has got <laughs> multiple seasons. I forget how many. This is like 10 or 11 seasons in Seven. this show. Seven. Okay. <laughs> it's got a lot. <laughs> so, so here's the thing with this island. Okay. okay. So it is a treasure island that people have buried treasure on and for a hundred years people have been digging up this island trying to find this treasure does it expand the island because they keep digging it, it should the dirt they put it back they keep it putting it back <laughs> so these two brothers own the island now mm -hmm. um, and they have joined in this effort and so, I mean, they, they bring in giant cranes, okay? But here's the thing. The treasure, they believe that the treasure could be things like the Ark of the Covenant, like Templar treasure. So this stuff. is a real show? This is a real show. Like reality? This is a reality show, but oh, not like okay. not like actors and stuff, okay? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's like I mean, actual real treasure actual hunters. Actual real treasure hunters, yeah. right, yeah. It does sound, and, this does sound like a show you would, you would it's watch. It's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, so I don't. I, I think everybody kind of has something in them where you like treasure. I mean, I, mean, I just I think like it's shiny be, things. Yeah, we all like. I mean? I mean, wouldn't that like be cool though things? if you found a treasure map and if you actually dug up a box of gold? Well, yeah. I mean, wouldn't awesome. that that would be so cool? Everybody I don't really likes money. Everybody likes money. Yeah. 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 But so so I was so I read the scripture this week and uh, just reminded of of my heart of what I you know I would love. But you'd have nothing else to do to just go to the Caribbean and you had a treasure map from Pirate Treasure mm -hmm. and just to, you know, hop over to that little island and get on the beach and dig up this treasure chest. Yeah. That would be super cool. Because treasure chests all kind of look the same. You know, they, they're kind of big and ugly and gnarly and mm -hmm. wooden and big metal straps. And, you know, because it's all made to contain and hold this treasure. And... You know, and, it, and you open it up, you know, reek, the lid opens after you chop the, the lock off and yeah. you get it open and there's just gold and necklaces and there's always a chalice in there. There's some mm -hmm. big cup and a mug yeah. and, you know, and just, you know, it's, it's like, you know, it's like, what's that, what's that pirate movie? Um, uh, oh, Pirates, Pirates of, the... Of, the, of the Caribbean. I said Caribbean. <laughs> but... Yeah, it's like that. And so I'm just thinking when I'm reading this verse, I'm just thinking... Of all the odd places to put treasure, because mm -hmm. this verse says that hidden in a jar of clay, in us, in our our fallen, sinful man, manhood, womanhood that we are, we all know the mistakes we've made, we all know the things we've done wrong, but the Bible says that hidden in us is treasure, and, and the, the, I think the thing is, we don't usually look at ourselves that way. We mm -hmm. look at ourselves as, well, I can't do anything right. Mm -hmm. uh, the devil reminds me all the time of the things I did wrong. Yep. We, uh, we, you know, we go to church. We feel how, you know, sometimes you hear the, the message of how evil you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it would be easy just to give up because you're just like, I can't, I, I, I keep repeating the same sin over and over. Yeah. I can't seem to get past myself. Uh, when, when I when I fall, when I do something wrong, you know, the, the enemy's right there to just put shame on you and tell you what a terrible person you are yeah. and laugh at you for doing exactly what he convinced you to do in the first place. Yeah. I think that's an easy thing to kind of accidentally preach of to try to work harder, like try to like in our own strength. Yeah. Well, even by I mean, no preacher would I hope no preacher would purposely, but we can kind of subconsciously or, you know, like. Turn or burn type of preaching. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's very yeah. in your face. But, if you just quit sinning, yeah, you'd be better. Mm -hmm. and, or God, I mean, because then it feels like, well, I hear that God's grace and mercy, and then, but I'm also hearing something different, or at least I'm feeling something different. You know, mm -hmm. that's the enemy uh, trying yeah. to yeah. convince us that God's grace and mercy is not good enough because of what you've done. Right. You know, yeah. and, and it, sure, it's good for grandma. For yeah. her sins, but yeah. what you've done. Yeah, and I believe that if we would just focus on, this is kind of what we were talking about earlier, you know, if we would just focus more on God's grace and mercy, you know, we would then, like, we would kind of get out of that cycle of sinning, shame, sin, shame, mm -hmm. sin, shame. And right. we would get into, okay, I messed up, but God still loves me. And because God loves me so much, 
I am, and God's changing my heart and changing my desires and changing my mind, heart, and soul, right. that he's repairing me and making me into something new. And it gets me out of that cycle and it repairs me and gets me out of that and starts, I'm, I'm changing right. now we, because God's, God's continually showing me love for whenever I mess up. Right. Right. Because I have nothing else but to do to change, you know, right. my body's reaction, you know. Well, you know, so, so there's, you know, there's two sides of this. There's the, we'll just keep preaching how evil your sins are mm-hmm. and you'll probably keep sinning. Yeah. Uh, because people have been preaching against sin forever. Mm-hmm. And do we need, do, the Bible says, should we continue in our sin? God forbid. You know, Definitely. that's what Romans says. No, Definitely. we shouldn't continue in our sin. Yeah. But if our focus is just not sinning, that's not the point. Mm-hmm. We will miss the fact that God stuck, because this, you know, this Second Corinthians, it is written to the, the church of Corinthia, of mm-hmm. Corinth. Yeah, yeah. And they were vile people. I mean, they were like having orgies at church and just all kinds of crazy That's stuff. Up. That's some messed up stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think? I mean, I got a question for you. Yeah. Do you think that God's number one plan and purpose for our life is to no longer sin? Like that's the number one thing of God's plan and purpose for my no, life is to no. stop sinning. Not no. No. His number one thing, I believe, is to have a relationship with yeah. us. To, to reveal to us his love, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, because that you look at the Garden of Eden and that's what it was about. It was that that relationship with yeah. God, yeah. you know, like uh, Lisa was talking last Sunday, Lisa Schwartz, shout out to her. Uh, she was she was reminding us in the message she preached in, in Cleaver that uh, that if, if your focus is on the physical things, mm-hmm. you miss out on the glory of God, of who God is. Yeah. And she was saying, because when the first when, when they sinned, then their focus was on themselves, you know, became self-focused on. And, and that's what happens if, if our focus is on the sin in our life or the sin in some, or, or if our focus is on just not sinning, then all we'll see in everyone else is sin. Yeah. And all we'll see in ourselves is sin. Should we should we stop sinning? The Bible says, God forbid that we would continue to sin. Mm-hmm. How shall we who have been set free from sin continue therein? But the message of Christianity is not to just quit sinning. That's not the message. The message is God has put a treasure in you. Begin to look at that. So how would we if if our number one focus isn't or is to if our number one focus mm-hmm. is to or it shouldn't be to just stop sinning. So, but that we all have the question of then when am I going to stop sinning, or when or when should I stop sinning? When should I be over this sin? Right. When should I like when when will I stop sinning? Well, or am I uh, is is that ever going to happen for me? Because I keep sinning. Yeah. I keep messing yeah, up. Yeah. Well, I think the I think the thing is. It's what our, and this doesn't, it, it's counter, it's maybe counterculture for maybe what we're taught. Yeah, so how do we stop uh, saying? Yeah, yeah I think the reason, that the well, for me, let me mm-hmm. just talk about me. Sure. Okay, what happened in my life is I grew up afraid I was going to go to hell. Mm-hmm. And so my prayer was every night, God, forgive me for all the sins I committed. I don't want to go to hell. Yeah. You know, something, you know, in a five-year-old, I remember laying in bed, <laughs> praying that every night. Fear is memorable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then what happened, you know, I became a teenager, probably just didn't pray as much, but the life didn't change. Yeah. I went to church. I loved Jesus. I wanted to serve him with my whole heart, but there was always that falling away. And am I perfect now? No. But what has changed is now... I realize how much God loves me. Mm -hmm. And the more I realize how much he loves me, it gives me value to who I am. And why would I go and squander who I am with just living that's unrighteous? Why would I, why would I take my physical body, the only body I have and wreck it with sin because I'm valuable. Mm -hmm. But if, if our focus is just sin, then what happens is we just put self guilt, self condemnation, and we devalue who we are mm-hmm. because we can't quit sinning. Yeah. 
And so, and so it makes the, us feel less than it makes us right. feel weak. It makes us feel right. So, and then we're just like, well, what's the use control. anyway? Yeah. yeah. See, and, and then in church, church has this reputation for having this, this hypocrites. That's what people, a lot of people don't go to church because you know, the church, because you have someone standing on a stage and telling everybody don't sin. And then when you find out that person is sinning, it's like, well, if they can't make it, yeah. if they can't live without sin, what in the world am I doing? Yeah. And so once again, it focuses on us. Yeah, but, if we're gonna if we're gonna preach that, you know, like I, like I I tell people, and I might be totally wrong. You can tell me I'm totally wrong. I'll tell you. But I'll tell you uh, right up. I tell people, and I don't. This isn't like a common thing that I say. It's not like my motto or anything. But like I have <laughs> sure. said, I have said in the past, you know, like. Like the church is all. If that's how you feel, like oh, the church is full of hypocrites. Like, yeah, you're you're right because, but God still loves us. You know, right. I mess up, but that that's not what it's all about. You know? Right. It's not all about the focus of not sinning or do this, don't do this. You know, because we are going to fail consistently. Right. But God loves us through it. So if you believe that that the church is full of hypocrites because you say we shouldn't do this, but you continue to do it then yeah, the church is full of hypocrites. Right. But you can join that and be part of it and find God's love, grace, and mercy right. in it. And find and whenever God keeps revealing His mercy to you over and over and over again, yeah. of that He's going to continue to forgive you, then, then that's just showing so much love and so much patience mm-hmm. that He has for us. You know, and then that's whenever I believe true change starts to happen. It's like, wow, you know, like, I mean, worst case scenario, I'm, I'm taking advantage of God's grace. I'm going to do this tonight and ask for forgiveness tomorrow, you know, and then God actually does forgive you. And then you you move into like, wow, it's kind of messed up for me to even have that thought to, process, to even, yeah, you know, because right. and he keeps loving me and he keeps staying with me and he keeps he, he wants to be with me, you know, right. and he keeps he he wants me. And it's like, wow, why am I doing this to a, a, exactly. a, a, a Why would I do yeah, that? Why would yeah. I do that to somebody that yeah. says they love me and continues to forgive me and doesn't turn their back on me? You know, and then it starts, then we start to grow and change and become a different person. And so sometimes I believe that God can change our hearts in an instant. Yeah, right. But I do right. believe like he's capable of doing that. But what we see most of the time is that it's a slow change. Right. And I believe that sometimes in the church, we want to see it. We want we want to see somebody we want to see somebody brand new come into church first time ever being in church never sin again yeah we want them to come into church we want that we want to see them uh, proclaim God as a, or d- d- pr- proclaim God uh, Jesus as Savior and uh, pr- r- uh, repent for their sins mm-hmm. get baptized be perfect and be and, perfect and yeah. All in one city, sitting. But none of know? us are that. <laughs> yeah, none of us. None of us. And yeah. even you know, even if you're like you, if you're self righteous and all that, you wouldn't be watching this. But uh, but even the the ones that would feel like, oh, I never sin anymore. Mm-hmm. You, that's sinful right there, because yeah. that's just pride. You know, the because sin is sin's not. It's not just the things we do. Yeah. It's the it's the attitudes of our heart. Yeah, and and it's in it's in that crazy mess that we are. Go back to our verse mm-hmm. that God says that's where I'm hiding my treasure, yeah. the treasure that I am. I hide it in there. That that we're a carrier of God's treasure. That just that motivates me. It doesn't it, it the the cross in some ways could give me permission to sin. That's definitely not what it's made for. Yeah. But because I know God's grace and His mercy, yeah, that's He like would what was, forgive. That's yeah. what I was saying. So, like you're kind of trying to you're trying to take advantage of right of the cross. Yeah, but but you would if you really know God, the more you get to know God, the less you will do that because yeah. you're like, why would I keep hurting? You know, in, in a husband wife relationship, you don't you know Ryan, you don't you don't do things purposely to make Aaron mad. Sometimes. That would well sometimes yeah. It's but, just funny. you don't do things you know you guys when you're married you don't do things to hurt you as a matter of fact you avoid things because you know it's going to hurt them yeah and then you get in trouble for avoiding that thing i'm just kidding (laughs) (laughs) because we can't read minds okay uh yeah so you you avoid hurting them because you love them no pizza for you yeah yeah, she's gonna send you no pizza for you (laughs) 
Yeah, so because and and the the, the longer you're married and the the greater that love grows, the less you want to hurt that yeah. person because you love them. It it, it it's not I'm not going to have an affair because of whatever. It's because there's no way I would do that because I know it would hurt them. Mm -hmm. it was, it's not because because I don't want a divorce. It's because I don't want to hurt them. Yeah. And you know, yeah. and, and that's when we, 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 we that's when sin, I know in my life, you know, as a Christian, that's when sin really began to change for me that that the things that used to tempt me, that it's still, you know, sin is still there. It's yeah. it's just more accessible now. And then I'm a grown man and I can just do whatever the heck I want to, you mm -hmm. know. Uh and because you just become smarter and you get become you can be more sneaky. So I can do whatever the heck I want to do, but the thing is my desire has changed because God has changed my heart. And he did that by revealing his love and, and me searching out his love. And the more I find out how much he loves me, the less yeah. I want to sin. Yeah. The desire. You know, there's things that used to and tempt he's me. he's killing that desire with right. his love. Really. Yeah, yeah. That's a great way to put it. His love is killing. In other words, the treasure in me is changing the treasure chest. Yeah. I become I realize I must be valuable. I realize there's something great hidden in me. Yeah, and you, yeah, and I mean and then he's just he's trusting us with this great treasure. You know, why would you trust me? I'm a thief, you know, or why would you trust <laughs> me? I'm the, a screw up. That's the irony of you know? it. Yeah. And, and then I mean that again, but, every aspect of it is just God showing us love over and over. Over and over and over and over. Because, you know, like I said earlier, this this is not written to the disciples, you know, that are, you know, got yeah, it all are, together. Yeah, these, you know. this is written to a group of people that keep getting it wrong. Get, keep messing it up. Yeah. yeah. And Christians at that. Yeah, too. yeah. And so Paul's writing, he says, we, me, Paul, and you bunch of crazy folks have this treasure in us. Yeah. In an earthen, you know, some of the translations say in a clay pot. Yeah, that's what, uh, yeah, fragile clay jar. Fragile clay jar. That's it. You, pretty you know, fragile. Yeah, if, if you had... My emotions are pretty fragile. <laughs> I love to just tell you. <laughs> if, if I had gold bars, there's people I would not let keep those for me. Yeah, you never see them again. Because that's right. <laughs> you'd be gone. You know, if I had a bag of diamonds, you know, and I had, and I, and I couldn't hold them for the weekend, I had to get, so, I would be so selective of who I handed those to, of who I gave those to. I wouldn't just be like, find some guy on the street and say, hey, would you hold these for me for a couple of days? I'll see you next week. Yeah. Ain't no way. Yeah, or like maybe like a little bit more uh, relatable. Like who, would you let a random person borrow your car? You know? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or yeah. house it while you're out you'd of town? You'd be checking their, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't know them, you'd be, do you have a driver's license? How many tickets have you had? You know. Or would you let a random stranger watch your kid? Wow, Man, that's a pretty tre wow. that's, a, that's a big treasure. Wow, that's a huge treasure. Yeah, here the God of the universe yeah. comes here with His love, the treasure of Him, and He says, "You know what? I'm leaving a palace in heaven to come and stay in a a jar, yeah, a clay pot. I'm leaving all the glory, all the splendor, to come and reside with you." You know, the, the thing I wanted to share with you guys tonight is you're valuable. Yeah. You are you are so valuable. I I know uh I know a couple of people I've talked to that you know, in this pandemic and being stuck at home and not really being able to get to church and not be around people, you're just stuck there with yourself and your own thoughts can just eat you alive yeah. of, of I you know, this happened and now I don't have a job and you know, you're just and we have all this time, especially a few weeks ago, all this time on our hands. I want to encourage you guys. You are not a mistake. You are worthy. You are valuable. You have a purpose. You have a calling. You have a destiny. You have a future. And if you keep getting tripped up in sin, quit focusing on that. Mm -hmm. Start focusing on the treasure that God has put in you. You're listening to this video because, because there's something in you that wants, wants more of God. You want to feed that God part of you. If we just focus on sin, we're never going to quit sinning. Yeah, and whenever we focus on sin, we're going to we're we're going to sin again either way. One one way right. or the other, whether we're focusing on just God or we're focusing on sin, 
we're going to mess up again. And so we're either going to have God to lean on with his mercy and with his grace. With his mercy and grace, yeah. Or if we are focusing on just not sinning, we're most likely then going to blame ourselves because it, we're just going through our own uh, efforts. Yeah. You know, and, yeah, and my efforts weren't enough to get me to stop sinning. So, of course, now I'm just going to blame myself and feel right. bad about myself, and the enemy's going to use that. Trying harder mm -hmm. <laughs> doesn't change anything. Yeah. And just, you know, when, when I was a kid, the, the fear of hell, that was, excuse me, that was motivation. Because, man, back in the day, those yeah. guys could preach about hell, you know, and they would, you know, scare you with a trumpet blast in the middle of church. And, you know, I remember being outside at dark going to feed the chickens and come back in the house and somebody's off in the other room mm -hmm. and I can't find anybody. I'm like, oh, God, the rapture happened. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm left. I'm left behind. And, you <laughs> I know, knew this was going to happen. I knew it. I knew I was terrible, you know. But, but you know, I, I began to learn about God and learn about his great love for me. Mm -hmm. And that love, it motivated me. It, it just changes the whole perspective when you realize how much, how much he loves you. You know, it's so my notes I've got, uh, there's a treasure in you. Uh, we are, we're, we're usually our worst critics. Yeah. We won't give ourselves a break for getting it wrong. We just continue to blame ourselves if we're not perfect. You know, as if anyone is, mm -hmm. we, if we can't reach that standard, but the perfect God chose to live in us, yeah. that we become perfect through him because we begin to focus on the treasure. You know, the treasure is not about the treasure chest. It's about the treasure. Yeah. Heaven's not I about. The, I want the end. Yeah. Like yeah. That's on the inside, Heaven's you know? and I, I've shared this with some of y'all. Heaven is not about the streets of gold and the gates of pearl. Heaven's about the people that are in it. The, the thing, the good thing about you is the God that loves you. That's what makes you valuable. And so we have to keep our focus in the right spot. I put this in my notes. God trusts you to carry his treasure. People won't trust you for nothing. I, but God trusts you. Yeah, I just, what does the word say? It says that we're ambassadors, you know, and I, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's we a, represent yeah, him. Yeah, we're representatives, yeah. we're ambassadors, you know, we're the ones that are called to share what the Bible says to the people that haven't read it. Right. You know, and that's a big calling, you know, that's a big, that's a big thing. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure you know that because you've been hurt that somebody has, because somebody has twisted the words and yeah. told you something that's not true, you know, because it's. That's possible, you know. It, yeah, we can really hurt somebody with, with do's and don'ts, and you're doing it wrong. Yeah, and and it, it's a big responsibility. It's it's life and life and death. But he says you can do it. Yeah, yeah. But he tr he's I, trusting. You I remember. To do it. I yeah. remember growing up and in church. I remember people being told, "Don't even come back until you quit doing that." Yeah, that's crazy. That's just. That's the like like everybody else in here is perfect, and when you get perfect, you can come to church. That's not what church is. That's not what church is about. That's mm -hmm. not what living for God is about. You don't live for God because all of a sudden now I'm perfect, so now I'm going to live for God. No, even if you're not living for God, there's a treasure in you. Mm -hmm. You just won't see it. Yeah. When you when you begin when you when your heart burns and you want to live for God, it's that treasure that's in you that's calling out and it's saying you're better than this. You're amazing. You're an incredible yeah. person. You are you you're a supernatural being because of what is in you. You know, I do different things with artwork, and one of the you know I just put a video out a few months ago just about the masterpiece in us. And when I was thinking about this today, I was just reminded of that um, because inside of you. In this <laughs> this broken down body is this treasure from heaven, uh, and so let, let me let me let me hit another verse here. Second um, Corinthians chapter four verse one. I think I got it here. I got that. One. Let's see here. Second Corinthians chapter four verse one. It says God has been kind enough to trust us with this work. This is why we never give up. That's the CEV. Why? Why do we keep getting back up? Why do we keep living for him? Because he's trusted us with this work. In other words, with this gift. Yeah. He's put this in us. And so that becomes the motivation. Why, why, why now do I decide I don't want to sin? Do I, do I want to avoid sin? It's because God's trusted me with this treasure. Mm 
Mm-hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to make him look bad. I don't want you know because I love him. So I want to honor what he's done for me. And so it's never now in my life. It's never this time of just like oh wow, I really want to do that, but you know I can't because I might go to hell. Mm-hmm. Or now it's because God loves me. Yeah, and He's trusted me with. And I think all of this. I think whenever you have that realization of that, like I love God so much that I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to keep sinning. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that also has to come with a revelation of that God is going to help me to not sin. Right. You know, God. Right. You know, I need to lean on God to help me to not sin because, again, if we start to lean on our own, on our own efforts, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, we're trying to take the place of God in our life of, of help, of helper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, of, we're trying to help him. Yeah, of, of savior. Yeah. You know, because I I believe that I can save myself because. I, I, I'm going to try my hardest just to not sin, you know? Yeah. And, and then we, we have to get out of that sense, you know, and lean on God for everything and trust in God for everything. And that is including your sin or your, your, yeah. your struggle. Well, that was something, you know, as you're saying that, I'm just reminded of Sunday. Uh, one of the things when I was preaching just kind of popped in my head. If we're, if we're just focusing on not sinning, then our real focus is just, it's selfish, just getting ourselves to heaven. Mm-hmm. If our focus is, oh, I just I just can't sin so I can get to heaven, I won't take it. That, that's not what we're made for. Mm-hmm. We're, the reason we're still breathing is to share the good news. Mm-hmm. And the good news most of us are sharing is, oh, I just hope you can make it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, Hope you don't do that again yeah. and you can make it to heaven. And, and not that there's a treasure in you. And that treasure will take care of you. That treasure will empower you. That treasure will change your desires, your heart, and your focus will now be not on, I just got to quit doing this. Mm-hmm. Now your focus is, man, what can I do for you? How mm-hmm. can I help? How can, you know, God has changed me. God's done something in me. Yeah. And the change isn't that I don't sin. That, that is a change. But the change is I see him differently. I see God for who he is. I see his love and his mercy. You got something you want to share on that, Ron? I saw you looking at some notes. No, I was going back into our yeah. uh, Facebook to see if you okay. had any comments or anything. So verses uh, 8 and 9. The, the, so th- this, this whole little chapter here, it's, I feel like it's kind of written backwards. Because uh, that it's verse 7 that you find out about the treasure. Mm-hmm. Verse 1 or 2 kind of kind of says this is why this is why we live an overcoming life because we have a treasure in but then it gets to 8 and 9 and it gives a better description I think of the power that we have. And so let me see if I have I don't know if I have a note on this one. Yeah, I do. Here we go. So uh look at look at what this says. It says so we are afflicted in every way but not crushed. <laughs> Yeah. Listen to that again. What, what, I think one of the translations says we, we, there's trouble all around, but it doesn't kill us. So we're afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Those are just some powerful words. And it's not because, remember, we're just jars of clay. That's who we are. It's not because of who we are that this happens. It's the, the realization that there's a treasure in us, and because of that treasure, I'm pushed down on every side, but I can get back up. Yeah. I'm persecuted, but not, not destroyed. I'm, how does it say that? I'm afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Why? Because of the treasure, not because I go to church every Sunday, not because, oh, I never sin. I'm perfect. Mm-hmm. No, it has nothing to do with that. It's because of the treasure that's in me. Man, I, so it's this inside, this, this yeah. you know, that, that, that's, that's the thing that empowers me and gives me the ability to live for God. When I say me, I don't mean like I've got it together and you don't. I don't mean it that way at all. I just mean us as a whole. As we, the more we realize what's in us, the more it can, that it can empower us to to change have we have we said what that treasure is or could be or no we haven't no well what is it then (laughs) i think i think that treasure i mean i think number one it's that god part of us Mm -hmm. that 
you know, and what I mean by that is even if you don't know God, there's times that you'll hear something and it just strikes a chord. You're like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, that God part in us, uh, that, 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 uh, because like I said, this is not written necessarily. This is written to sinners. We, you know, um, uh, so I, I believe it's that God part in us. It is the the gift of of, of the Spirit of God in us. Yeah. It's His love. It's His grace. His mercy. I think it's a whole bunch of God things that He puts in us. Mm-hmm. Um, is it? Whenever I'm thinking of it, or whenever I'm reading it, I'm thinking maybe it's like the Spirit of God, like in mm-hmm. us, that we have the Spirit of God in us and. The Spirit of God is in us whenever we sin and mess up, but God still has trusted us with the Spirit of God and the power that that comes with, mm-hmm. and and it, there's a great responsibility to that, and God has trusted us with that. Wow. And God has trusted us with a calling, and that's a treasure. Mm-hmm. You that's know, a treasure, a, right? A calling and a uh, a destiny for our life, you know. Mm-hmm. And and it, we can mess all of that up, but God is still trusting us. To trusting us with it, and if we do mess it up, He's still going to love us with it, love right, us through it. Right. Well, I think faith. The Bible yeah. says that we are all we're all given a measure of faith. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's you got Jesus on the cross, and you have these two thieves on either side of Him. Yeah. And the treasure, you know, the real treasure, the Jesus is right between them. Yeah. And one chooses the treasure, one doesn't, but they both had a treasure in them. One of them just couldn't see it. Mm-hmm. All he was looking at was sin and the evil and the, you know, the condemnation that we were talking about yeah. earlier, the shame, you know, the enemy, and you know, it's it's. I believe I believe that in every person there is a there is a God part that God is trying to uh, illuminate and awaken, and our job as believers, the good news is to share that with other people that there, there's something, you know, when was the last time you could really look at somebody that's evil and try to look past the evil mm. to see the good, you know, because I think sometimes we just write it off. Well, there's no hope for them. Mm-hmm. But there's, you know, there's, there's always hope. There's always hope. Well, that's what I wanted to share tonight, Ryan. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good amount of time that we spent on it 44 you, minutes wow 44 minutes wow it's like, like 18 you that 17 right? and a half mm-hmm. no I thought it was a little longer yeah yeah well I just I just want to encourage you guys that you know no matter what's going on in your life don't let don't let the failures of your life dictate your future yeah don't let the times that you've made a mistake don't let that determine who you think you are mm-hmm. because you have a treasure in you yeah. God looks at you. He sees you differently. Yeah, I'm sure it, whatever the picture you have of yourself is not the picture that God no, looks at. No, 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 no way. Yeah, and the picture we have of other people, yeah, definitely. you know, is not the way you know yeah. God sees them. I think it's a great prayer for tonight. Of God, help us to see ourselves how you see us, and mm-hmm. help us to see other people how you see them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Give us a truer vision. Show us, show us our importance, you yeah. know, and remind us of your grace and your mercy daily. Right. You know, because the Lord says that His, what is it, His mercies are new, new every, every day. day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, what makes it? What makes a treasure chest worth something? The inside. The inside. Right. Yeah, good answer. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Is this you, a question? You, you're gonna about have <laughs> two treasure chests, yeah. and one of them's empty, and it's just a wooden box. Yeah, it's worthless. It has no value. Yeah, it's just an ugly wooden rotted box. Mm-hmm. But you put treasure in it, and now it's a treasure chest. Mm-hmm. And that's the way you are. You are a treasure. Yeah. We want to pray, lift you guys up. Just want to pray over you guys. I did get a message from this is from Gwyneth. Uh, she's she's uh, her husband passed away a few a couple months ago, maybe one mm-hmm. month ago, uh, and they're having some financial issues getting the life insurance and all that. Uh, money released so that they can get their bills caught up so she's just yeah. asking for prayer for that you know she's going through the loss of her husband and all of that and then on top of it you know she's got bill collectors and stuff messing with her and yeah. something about the social security and getting all that funds released so we need to lift up Gwyneth tonight and just pray for her uh, do we have any other um, 
prayer requests. I, I forget to tell you guys when we start uh, to send in prayer requests, and they usually come in right after we get offline. Uh, so we're going to kind of go slow here for a minute. If you've got a prayer request, please go ahead and send that in. We want to pray with you. We want to agree with you that God is going to move in your life. And if you're just feeling like you're not worthy, man, you know, you could somehow write a prayer request for that. Just say, you know, Pastor Gary, Pastor Ryan, pray for me, and uh, we'll know what you're talking about. Yeah. So uh, just we'll give you a few more minutes just to text in, send in your, your prayer request, and we're going to hit those here in just a minute uh, and pray because we believe God is a miracle worker. And I just want to pray that God opens your eyes, that you see the treasure that's in you, uh, not, not, the, not the box, not the box that you feel like you are. I'm not even a good treasure chest. I got <laughs> holes in me and stuff. <laughs> and if, if you have a prayer request during the week or anything, we do have the prayer Yeah, chain. uprising prayer chain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so uh, I believe we've changed that now where it's a public accessed uh, site. Um, okay, cool. And so uh, it used to have used to have to be a member of the church to join that, and we've changed that because our church is growing so much just with the online status and all that. And so, uh, so if you have a prayer request, it's just called the Uprising Prayer Chain. I think you um, can find it on our Facebook. I'm trying to find it, but I, I don't know. It's a, you can just yeah, search it's on there. The up, it's okay. it's on our groups. Yeah, it's on the yeah, group yeah. Of, of our church's website. So anytime during the week you you have a need uh, prayer, uh, there's quite a few people that follow that. Yeah. Um, you know, we just we just do ask if you follow that. That's not a place to gossip or vent your dirty laundry. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just a place to uh, to put your prayer request out there, and we pray for every single one of them. So, have we got any more prayer requests, Ron? Uh, I'm trying to get back into the video. No, we had, we I had a lot video, last yeah. week that we missed, and that's why I'm kind of just taking some extra time here tonight. Aaron to says sure. praise report. Uh, Love Port those. Porter slept all through the night. Whoa! For the first time in a while. Wow! Good awesome. job, Porter. Good job. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. All right. Any other prayer requests, Ryan? We got any more? Oh, oh I'm it. sure we're gonna miss it, but yep. uh, I'm not perfect. Yep, Ron's not perfect. Yeah. He's got a treasure in him, but it's a jacked up box. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, I don't see anything. Yours looks better than mine, though. So. All right, well, let's pray for Gwyneth, and let's just lift everybody up. Lord, I thank you so much for tonight. I thank you for your word. Lord, I pray for a new revelation that you would give us eyes, God, not to look for sin, Lord, but eyes to see the treasure that you've put in us, God, because you have chosen to dwell in us. Lord, I pray that you just give us eyes that we can see that. Lord, give us revelation. Lord, I break off guilt and shame. Lord, all the, the, the disheartening feelings that the enemy has put in us. Lord, we bind that in Jesus' name. Lord, give us new eyes to see ourselves. And give us eyes to see other people. Lord, those people that we have written off. Lord, I pray that you give us new view of them. Lord, let us realize that ugly outward shell is not who they are. That's just the box. Lord, we thank you because inside of them is a treasure from heaven. Lord, and they may not know there's a treasure in there. And that might they might, you know, they just may not be what we would call kind or, or, or nice people. God, but we just pray that we can see beyond that rough exterior and see the treasure that's in them. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we lift up the Brown family. Lord, I just pray that you yes. touch Gwyneth, Lord. Lord, as they're just going through the death and the grief and all that process, Lord, I pray that you comfort her heart, comfort her boy's heart, comfort that family. Lord, re I just pray, God, that you would reach out to them and do a miraculous work in their finances. Lord, we just call for a release in Jesus' name. Lord, release that money that's supposed to be coming to them so they can get their bills paid. Lord, I pray that you release it in Jesus' name. Lord, open the windows of heaven. Pour out blessings on them. Lord, I just thank you for that. I thank you for meeting the need, for doing the work in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that nothing's going to be shut off. I thank you that nothing's going to be taken away. Lord, I just thank you, God, that you're going to do a big work in that family. And Lord, we just give you glory and praise. Lord, the other ones that will watch this video later, Lord, I pray for them as well. I just pray that you meet the needs. Heal the sick. Lord, save the lost. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Lord. Amen. Anything else? I don't believe so. I think we're done. I think that's All right. it. Well, I'm Pastor Gary. This is Pastor Ron. We love you guys, and we are out of here. See you later.